Hello and welcome to my presentation on graphic novels. I will start my presentation by explaining what graphic novels are on a general basis before going into detail about some specific traits that are characteristic of comics. Those consist of the vocabulary of graphic novels, closure, time frames, lines and comics, show and tell, the six steps and color. I will also sometimes refer to graphic novels as comics throughout this presentation. What are graphic novels? Well, one explanation, according to Scott McCloud, would be juxtaposed pictorial and other images in deliberate sequence intended to convey information and or to produce an aesthetic response in the viewer. Graphic novels in that sense already existed very early on. For example, the pre-Columbian picture manuscript discovered by Cartier around 1519. But graphic novels as we know them today started appearing in the 20th century. The father of the modern comic is Rodolfo Töpfer in the mid 1800s, who employed cartooning and panel borders and featured the first interdependent combination of words and pictures seen in Europe. Defining what exactly graphic novels are has been an ongoing process though, and it is often easier to not define them too clearly since many definitions end up being too restrictive. For example, not mentioning specific content of the graphic novel, as that is decided by each creator themselves. Well, and the art form thus can hold any number of ideas and images. It often combines words and pictures, but that's not necessary, and even those graphic novels without words count, as they are still a sequence of images that convey information. So basically space does for graphic novels what time does for film. Each frame of graphic novels must occupy a different space. Saying that, single panels do not count as graphic novels since the sequence doesn't exist, though they do make use of comic arts. After all, part of the visual vocabulary is taken from comics. The vocabulary of graphic novels. The vocabulary of graphic novels consists of icons. Icons are any image used to represent a person, place, thing or idea. There are also different kinds of icons. There are symbols, pictures and non-pictorial icons. In graphic novels, pictures and non-pictorial icons are usually used. While picture icons are designed to resemble their subjects, non-pictorial icons represent invisible ideas. The meaning of pictures is considered fluid and variable as they can be different from real life to varying degrees, while the meaning of non-pictorial icons is fixed and absolute. Words are considered non-pictorial icons, or in other words, abstract icons. But speaking of this variability of pictures, in many graphic novels the act of cartooning is used to do just that. And cartooning is basically amplification through simplification. So by abstracting an image, we aren't eliminating details, but focusing on specific details instead, which does get amplified. There's also the aspect of the universe universality of cartoon imagery. The less realistic a face is, the more people can identify themselves with it, which does causes more fascination with cartoons due to the universal identification and simplicity. This strengthens the audience's involvement into the graphic novel, which is a speciality of cartooning. So basically the unified language of comics is the center where words and pictures are like two sides of one coin. The total pictorial vocabulary of comics or of any of the visual arts thus consists of reality, meaning and the picture plane. The picture plane is a place where shapes, lines and colors can be themselves and not pretend otherwise. And here you can see a representation of the total pictorial vocabulary of comics or of any of the other visual arts. Closure. Closure is the phenomenon of observing the parts but perceiving the whole. So, for example, during peekaboo, our perception of reality is an act of faith. Even if we can't see, hear, smell, taste or touch something, we still know it's there. And we mentally complete that which is incomplete based on past experience during those moments. In graphic novels, the audience is a willing and conscious collaborator, and closure is the agent of change, time, and motion. 
We use closure in graphic novels in between the panels, in the space that is called the gutter. Comic panels fracture both time and space and offer a jacked staccato rhythm of unconnected moments and the audience uses closure to connect and mentally construct a continuous unified reality. This closure, committed by the reader, is thus the primary means of simulating time and motion in graphic novels. And well, there are different panel-to-panel -panel transitions that make use of closure to varying degrees. The first panel-to-panel -panel transition would be the moment-to-moment -moment transition, which requires very little closure. So for example, in one panel a woman has her eyes opened, while in the next panel she has her eyes closed. Then there's the action-to-action -action transition, which also doesn't require much closure. And as the title already says, there's just one action following another action in those panels. In the subject-to-subject -subject transition while staying within a scene, a lot of closure is needed from the reader to connect the panels as it's not as easy anymore as it was with the moment-to-moment -moment and action-to-action -action transitions. The scene-to-scene -scene transitions require deductive reasoning and transitions which transport us across significant distances of time and space. Since, well, the reader has to understand that while panels aren't set in the same time and space anymore, they are still connected. The aspect-to-aspect -aspect transitions bypass time and set a wandering eye on different aspects of a place, idea or mood, while the non-sequitur transitions offer no logical relationship between panels, but due to putting them into sequence with, with each other, the audience forms a relationship between them nonetheless and tries to make sense of them, even though on first glance they don't seem to be connected. There is an east and west split in the amount of usage of each of these transition types. The west uses mostly action-to-action -action transitions and additionally subject-to-subject -subject and scene-to-scene -scene transitions. While the east still uses action-to-action -action transitions, they do so way less than the west and even use subject-to-subject -subject transitions just as much. Additionally, they also use a bit of moment-to-moment -moment transitions and, in comparison, rarely seen in the West, the aspect-to-aspect -aspect transitions, which are mostly used to establish a mood or a sense of place. Eastern art often emphasizes the being there over the getting there, and for them, graphic novels are often an art of intervals. The idea that elements omitted from a work of art are as much a part of that work as those included is very important to them while Western art emphasizes the getting there over the being there. Graphic novels are both subtractive and additive, and each comic creator has to find the balance between these in their panels so that the reader can easily follow along. The reader does so mostly with a sense of vision, which is needed within the panels, but between them all other senses are engaged to imagine the rest of the scene, be it sound, the way something would possibly smell or feel like, or anything else related to the scene. Using closure in the way it is used to imagine what happens between panels is unique to graphic novels. No other art form gives so much to its audience while asking so much from them as well. Time frames. The illusion of time in graphic novels is created with pictures and through closure in the intervals between them, as well as through words. Time passing can be depicted through motion and words representing sounds. And while these sounds can be broken down into two subsets, word balloons and sound effects, while motion can also be broken down into two subsets, panel to panel closure and motion within panels. The passing of time can even be expressed in one panel itself. Each figure may be arranged in relation to the words and from left to right in a sequence we will read them, each occupying a distinct time slot. So one panel can operate as several panels through the usage of words. So for example, on this picture we can see a man telling people to smile before taking a picture of them, but we can also already see the puff of the picture being taken. and the two people reacting to the picture being taken. Obviously, this wouldn't all happen at the same time, so just by arranging them from left to right here, we have this creation of the passing of time in only one panel. The shapes that we call panels hold in their borders all of the icons that add up to the vocabulary of comics, but panels themselves are actually also icons. 
the icons that we call panels or frames have no fixed or absolute meaning and their meaning isn't fluid and malleable as picture icons a panel is the general indicator that time or space is being divided and the contents of the panel define the durations of time and the dimensions of space time and space are one and the same in graphic novels but the reader can't determine for sure how much time actually passes they do so by guessing, based on personal experience, as long as the elements of the sequence are familiar to them. Panel shapes can also affect the reading experience. So it can make a difference in the perception of time. For example, bigger versus smaller panels, the format and the content of a panel all make a difference. So let's say, for example, a borderless panel takes on a timeless quality, while the content of a silent panel, which offers no clues as to its duration and has an unresolved nature, also has the sense of timelessness. Another example would be bleeds, which is a panel running off the edge of the page. The effect of those is compounded. Time is no longer contained by the icon of the closed panel. Time and motion are also closely linked. A span of time can be represented in a single panel through pictures, in other words, by representing motion. This is possible through the motion line. The motion line was first used sparingly, more so in the West than in the East, until subjective motion became more popular in the East. Here you can see the basic concept of the motion line on the left side, and on the right side you can see an example of how it's used in Eastern art. Subjective motion lines are used to depict the movement around the reader who's put in a driver's seat, thus involving them even more into the graphic novel. Motion and passing time can also be depicted by having a figure move over a continuous background. This is called the polyptic way of showing motion. Lines in comics Lines, shapes and colors can suggest the inner state of the artist and provoke the five senses. For that, synesthetics is important, so the idea of uniting the different art forms which appeal to the different senses by uniting the senses through a specific art. Well, all lines carry with them an expressive potential. Lines are symbols, and symbols are the basis of language, after all. So the more a symbol is used, the more it enters the language of graphic novels, and this visual vocabulary has an unlimited potential for growth. The most widely used, most complex and most versatile synesthetic icon is the word balloon. The word balloon's shape changes to depict emotions, while the symbols that already exist or are newly invented, used inside of it, and the variations of lettering styles cover the nonverbal as well. All of those basically struggle to capture the essence of sounds. Backgrounds are also often used to indicate invisible ideas, particularly emotions, so the inner state of a character. Here you can see a few variations of the word balloon's shape and the symbols used inside of it. Pictures and lines can cause strong feelings in the reader, but lack the specificity of words, which rely more on a gradual cumulative effect in terms of causing emotions. To experience these emotions, the reader has to engage with the material through closure, using their experiences to observe, understand, and see the invisible in the lines. Show and tell. Pictures were used to describe things in the past when words didn't exist yet, and gradually became more and more abstract until they formed what we now identify as letters, though some written languages bear traces of the ancient pictorial heritage. In many cases, words and pictures stayed separate. The written word was becoming more specialized, abstract and elaborate, and less like pictures. Writing is also obsessed with the invisible, the senses, emotions, spirituality and philosophy. Over time, writing was going back towards the simplicity in writing. The language became more direct and conveyed meaning quickly and simply. Pictures, on the other hand, became more representational and specific, and art in many cases was obsessed with resemblance, light and color, and all things visible. Over time, art was also able to spread out towards the picture plane, getting more abstract again in varying degrees, and thus returning to meaning and art, back to the realm of ideas.
Eventually, writing and art collided and formed in its most basic form the graphic novel. But even today, many people still consider great art and great writing as devoid of each other. These two extremes meet in different ways inside of graphic novels, and while the options in which they can be combined are virtually unlimited, there are some distinct categories. There are the word-specific combinations in which pictures illustrate but don't significantly add to a largely complete text. There's also the picture-specific combinations in which words act as a soundtrack to a visually told sequence. In the duo-specific combinations, words and pictures both send essentially the same message, while in the additive combinations, words amplify or elaborate on an image, or vice versa. In the parallel combinations, words and pictures follow different courses without intersecting, while in a montage, words are treated as integral parts of the picture. And lastly, there's the interdependent type, where words and pictures go hand in hand to convey an idea that neither could convey alone. This is also the most common type. What's important to know is that words and pictures aren't always on an equal balance and can fall anywhere on a scale between great art and great writing. So the more is said with words, the more the pictures can be free to go exploring, and vice versa. The six steps. The creation of any work in any medium always follows a certain path consisting of six steps. The six steps consist of 1. The idea or purpose, so the work's content. 2. The form the work will take, for example, a book, a drawing, or even a chair. 3. The, the idiom, so the genre that the work belongs to and its vocabulary of styles or gestures or subject matter. 4. The structure what and how to put it together and arrange it, how to compose the work. Five, the craft, so the constructing of the work. And lastly, six, the surface, which is the production values, finishing the aspects most apparent on first superficial exposure to the work. The order of these steps is innate. They can be discovered in any order, but when brought together, they will always fall into place. Any aspect of graphic novels could be the one first drawing an artist in, but often it's a long, slow and steady process of learning from end to beginning, so from surface to core, in other words, from step 6 to step 1. The most important question an artist has to ask themselves is, why am I doing this? This question is asked at the core. The reason can either be realized in step 1, so the idea or purpose, or in step 2, the form. Ideas or purposes rule the work and determine its shape, but they also require invention and the ability to convey messages effectively by using form. Form, on the other hand, explores the shape of art and by questioning the fundamental assumptions can anticipate a world of unknown experiences. In this case, art becomes the purpose while ideas give it substance. Artists can, however, change their choice on which of the two to pursue as often as they change projects. Color The relationship between colors and graphic novels depends on commerce and technology. All aspects of the history of graphic novels have been affected by commerce so far, whereas color in graphic novels has been sensitive to the shifting tides of technology. When colored printing first appeared, it boosted sales and costs of graphic novels simultaneously, so that humanity had to take measures in making it more cost-effective. This gave birth to the standard four-color process. The standard four-color process restricted the intensity of the three primary colors to 100%, 50%, and 20%, and used black ink for the line work. The look of these colors in graphic novels became the look of comics in America very quickly and was mostly used in superhero comics, where the heroes were clad in bright primary colors and fought in a bright primary world. So the colors were picked for strength and contrasted with one another, while on most pages no one color dominated. I'd like to go into more detail on that last note. So on most pages where no one color dominated, there was no emotional impact of single color saturation. The expressive potential was also cancelled out to an emotional gray, and there were only some exceptions to this. 
Colors were instead used to symbolize characters in the mind of the reader, since costumes were usually the same color in every panel. Basically, colors objectify their subjects, and the reader becomes more aware of the physical form of objects than in black and white. I would also like to say something on the topic of flat color. Masters of flat color are also masters of form and composition, since flat colors offer the opportunity to express oneself through a more intense subjective palette and express a dominant mood. They could even add depths to a scene, or, well, whole scenes could be virtually about color. And last but not least, colors act as a central role, a sensation, as environment, and color as color. I would like to thank you for listening, and I do hope that my presentation helped you learn a few things about graphic novels.